the last wheel for the ceramic coating. Um, now we're gonna switch over to the calipers. So here we go. Stickers. These are the OEM stickers for the four pistons. So we're gonna be taking off the tape and everything and then putting them on. I'm gonna make it burn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it burn. Let's go. What's going on? It's Octane Ray 392. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are staying safe out there, keeping yourself safe, keeping your family safe, covering up, and staying in good spirits during these trying times. Hope you guys are enjoying this video so far. If not, no. All right, guys. So, sorry about the angle. Just trying something new here. Um, we're gonna be doing the wheels. Same way I did mine. If you don't remember my video, I did the same thing to my wheels in the same order. So when I say that, I mean, this is the driver's side front wheel. Driver side rear wheel, so on and so forth. That's the front passenger, that's the rear passenger. And we're gonna be cleaning these wheels today with Poor Boys Spray and Rinse Wheel Cleaner. Focus. There we go. There it is. All right, so we're gonna start with adding water first. And with this, you wanna dilute it. You don't wanna open the bottle and just start going at it with this stuff. You wanna dilute it. I did it uh, three parts water, one part solution. I got other stuff in another bottle. I put it in that show you guys. So, start with water. Since he's on the car, I don't need since he's on the car, I don't need my handy dandy wheel brush. I may still use it to get into these tight spaces. First, wet it. I'm gonna do the outside first. Get your mitt. Just be careful these corners or whatever wheels you have, just be careful with doing it. This is an easy way to hurt your fingers and just have you in a bad mood. I'm gonna show you how I clean this first wheel in real time, and then I'm gonna speed the rest of this up. Get up in there. All right, now we're gonna turn it over. It's still very wet, so we don't want it to get, to start drying with this chemical on here. Also, I want to point out a thing, this is for Dodge with the Daytona rims. My buddy just got his Daytona, so his rims aren't finished on the inside. I really don't understand why they did that. I mean, they, they upcharge you for the Daytona package, and then they, they kind of skimp on the inside of the rim. It's not finished. Uh, when you see my rims, they were finished because they were done over, but I really think Dodge should go the extra step and finish the inside of the wheels of the Daytona, just because I mean you already charging some extra money for them. Why not go a little bit extra for those guys? So I'm do the same thing on the inside. Spray more of the Poor Boys spray and rinse wheel cleaner. It says no rub, no scrub, but I like cleaning. I like touching what I'm cleaning. I've never been a fan of just spraying it on and just leaving it and then washing it off. I just like feeling like I'm contributing to the job as well. So now, first room is all done. When these drop, I'll show you guys again what I was talking about with the inside of the rim not being finished. And you can compare to my other video of me doing my rims and you'll see what I'm talking about. Nice and clean. All right. Now I'm gonna sweep the rest of these up. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, oh, we stopped. Okay, we stopped doing that. Okay. Okay, yeah, we're done, guys. So we're gonna go put these inside. 
drum off and start the ceramic coating process. So here we go. All right, guys. Um, sorry about the camera angle, but this is gonna have to do. So I just want to show you. This is better for you guys anyway to see just what I'm wanting to show you. So this is the dodge on the rim. I'm gonna dry it off and I'm gonna show you guys what I was talking about with the part that's finished. It looks amazing. I love this finish. I actually kind of miss it. I mean, you can't really tell. Well, you can tell, I can tell. Um, on my car, my rims are finished a little different because of them having to be repaired. But you will see what I was talking about earlier where I was telling you guys how the inside of the rim, which you commonly refer to as the barrel of the rim. Um, I'm gonna show you guys, well, I'll take that back. It's probably not. But anyways. On the inside here, it, it looks finished on camera, but it's not. So we're inside, we're gonna be drying off the rims now. I've already dried off two of them. I'm sorry, I forgot to hit the record button. I was literally looking at my camera and talking and look at what's happening. So yeah, um, drying the rims off, this part is pretty much just getting all of the water off of the rim, all the moisture, all of that. So after we dry them off, we're gonna still let them air dry for another like 10, 15 minutes. And while we're doing that, we're going to be prepping the brakes to be painted with a G2 caliper paint or colors that match very well with the paints or secondary colors. So I'm pretty sure they don't have an octane red, but they have a yellow and that's my secondary color. So I went with that over black, it's neither here nor there. As you can see, got an angle. That's pretty, that's pretty, pretty decent. For the inside of the rim. Now, like I said, I've dried them. I'm gonna let these air dry for like 10, 15 more minutes while I prep the brakes to be painted. So, here we go. All right guys, so now we're gonna start with the application of the Poor Boys ceramic coating. That's product, some of these velvet rags for even dispersion of the product across and then once you wipe it down you want to go back across once with the rag that comes with it this helps smooth out the coating before it starts to dry then you want to wait a minimum of 48 hours before you put soap and water like purposely on the on the wheels you want to give it time to adhere strokes in the direction of the rim then I'll kind of work my way down the rim from the outside in so now I've done that You can see where you're hitting it at. You can just see the film. And 
and that's it. So just like that, then if you want, you let it dry for 20 minutes and hit it again. But before it dries or starts to dry completely, you rub it over, give it a once over with the rag. You're not wiping it away. You're just pretty much smoothing it out, evening it around the entire surface that you just covered. So you won't have lines from when you were applying it. And just like that, that's how easy it is to apply the Poor Boys ceramic coating. So now I'm gonna speed the rest of these up and we'll be right back with the brake system. And I got a little help from a good buddy of mine. I'll introduce him when we get to that. was the last wheel for the ceramic coating. Um, now we're gonna switch over to the calipers. So here we go. All right guys, we're back. This is the caliper painting portion. And thanks to my good buddy, Kevin from JP Motorsports. He helped up, me, everybody? He helped me prep and I found out some things about the four pistons that I'm gonna talk about in another video, but it's, it's kind of heartbreaking. For six piston owners, not for four piston owners. Anyways, <laughs> so as you can see, we've sectioned up a certain part of the caliper to paint. And by the way, can you guess what color we're gonna be painting it? If you haven't seen it already in the video, but after we prep it, we're gonna be using the G2 caliper paint system to paint these so they stay a nice color for a very long time. And also we're gonna be sanding this down a little bit before we get to the primer and it lasts for a very long time. So here we go. The purpose for the sandpaper is to make sure the surface paint adheres to the surface very well. Sorry about that. Yeah, you guys don't need to like sand it down to bare metal or nothing. I mean, it is pretty much bare metal because it's a cast piece, but you don't need to hit it with any overkill. It's just to get all the little surface corrosion or salt or anything that's on there so that your paint like he said gets a good surface to adhere to and just with a little bit of 500 grit dry sand take a little bit off we'll hit it with some brake cleaner and uh get the primer so you heard that right guys 500 grit sandpaper is what we're using and we're using brake cleaner there's some that come with the g2 caliber paint and there's also some that we have is extra so we want to make sure it's very clean so when we do start adding paint and stays on for hopefully the life of the car. Get your towel wet, microfiber or shop towel, whatever you prefer. And kind of just wet the surface because the brake cleaner will dry very quickly. If you've used brake cleaner before, yeah. you know it dries up real quick. And you don't want to be spraying it all over the caliper because you don't want it to spray over here and mess up any plastic or paint that you have near. Another reason for the paper protect yourself and your beautiful vehicle and with that we're pretty much cleaned up all right guys so we're gonna start painting this one show you how we prep this one and then we're gonna go about prepping the other ones we're gonna speed those up then once it's already uh, the paint has dried we're gonna sand it then we're gonna are we gonna do two coats of primer or just one uh, we'll see how thick the primer lays down. Okay. If it's a pretty thick one, we probably don't, probably only need one. Okay, so just on the type of primer, how we're using, and we're also using Duplicolor primer. So pick it up at your local auto parts store. We got this one from O'Reilly, so. Yep. Local stuff you can pick up for cheap. It's only about $6 a can. So we'll see how it goes. Duplicolor. Yeah. All right, I'll dry it up. All right, I'm just gonna go over it light and see what we like about it. Okay. 
This may take a little time because you don't want to go on a heavy. Some like the first coat is always kind of eh, just because you don't want to have it running. So this may take a little longer, but for the process, it's way better. Take those strokes here. Damn. <laughs> Whatever. And this is quick drying, so I don't want to put my finger on it, but we're going to eyeball it. It's not runny or anything. You want to keep an eye on that too. You don't want to, once you see it start to run, you kind of want to run because then it's just, it's over. But too late at that point. Yeah. So take your time with it. You don't have to rush this part. Now you guys see after just a couple rounds with the spray, it's starting to get thicker on there. And that's when you're knowing that you're getting that solid first coat. That first one that he sprayed, that thin mist allows the rest of it to start grabbing it a lot quicker and creating that thick layer that you want. Because now none of this is shiny anymore up top. That's how you know you're getting a good first coat. Yep, so this part, you want to take your time. You want to give it time to dry as well. I already put the first coat on and I just put the second coat on. So we're probably going to cut and come back and let it sit for a good three, four minutes and then go over it one more time. It's fine with this being barely seen. We probably will do it so you can barely see Brembo in the paint. And then we're gonna start with the other side and prepping that one. And by the time we're done with all four, this will be ready for the G2 paint. All right guys, so the second coat has dried pretty good. We're gonna do one last coat before we let that dry and sand that down a little bit. So the G2 paint will adhere to the primer. All right, so now it's completely covered and we're gonna let that dry and be right back. All right. All right guys, we're back. As you can see, the calipers have all been primered with four coats. So it took four coats to get them completely primed and that's from before all around it took about 20 minutes and so now we got the paint over here from g2 as well as the reactor so you're gonna put the whole uh bottle of reactor in the can of paint you have to then wait five minutes for the paint and reactor to finish the chemical uh, reaction, reaction. And then from there you have up to six hours, is that? Yeah, four to six hours. Before four to six that. hours before the paint turns into cement, pretty much. So, if you haven't guessed already, you can't see it, that is white. We will be painting these calipers white. And bright white too. Mm-hmm. The kit comes with the reactor, a mixing tool, the paint of course, and a brush. This is the brush it comes with, but uh, we're going to be using not only that brush, technology. there we go, these. <laughs> <laughs> Got them. So we have multiple brushes because there are two of us. Thanks again for Kevin from JP Motorsports. Once again, check his channel out as well. After you subscribe, like, comment, share this video, head on over to his channel, check out his awesome builds that he's gonna be doing with, what is it again you're gonna be doing in your shop? Gonna be doing a 1985 GTI, Volkswagen GTI, swapping the original motor out with a VR6 engine out a 2000 Jetta and I'm gonna turbo it 70 millimeter turbo I'm gonna probably go nine to one compression I want to make around four to five hundred horsepower and make it fun so stay tuned for that build is on the way and in oh, yeah. the process so yeah we'll let that activate yeah, for it's about been, five minutes it's been a minute already brush here Mm. All right, that's 
Nah, I'm gonna go with the fancy brush. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm gonna just hit this front face for you guys. See how it looks nice, just a little dab. We'll see how it goes on with the primer. It's not bad. Not bad at all. You can see it's it's adhesing, adhesing, yeah, adhesing, right? Yeah. To the primer, very nice. So that's just a very thin layer. You know, just like how when you primer it, you get a nice thin layer on there. Let that kind of soak in and dry up a little bit, and then you'll start making it thicker and getting that solid white look. Uh, well, that brush can get in there too. Yeah. Might want to hit it before we mess the brush up a little bit. Yeah. And that's just the first coat, so. Yeah. How did you do your other ones just like this, or did you get yeah. a little heavier on the first one? I was just like this. It, it looked, I, I started a little bit earlier. I ain't gonna lie, I kind of rushed that, and it was like, wow, this looks. Ugh. But once that five minute mark kicked in, it started looking like this. I'm like, okay, I get it now, I got it. And then it's just making sure you put it on. You don't, like I said, you don't want to go too heavy, but you can only because it's self leveling paint, and you want to make sure you get all a good even base coat on first, and then. Of course you go back and you hit those heavier spots you know you get to the point to where you're like okay i wanted to make it a little bit thicker just to you know it's going on real smooth oh yeah but yeah like we said guys on your first coat you don't need to go heavy just get a nice light thin layer on there so that it can start to dry. You don't have to worry about the can leaving it open because it takes about four to six hours, like we said, for this paint to actually start hardening and everything. So you don't need to rush, take your time, do it right. It's not gonna dry just from sitting here. Yeah, so we're gonna actually speed this up because we don't want it to seem like you're watching paint dry, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so. We're gonna speed this up some. Well, people, let me just uh, stop the production for a minute and let you know. <laughs> uh, quick warning though. If you guys know what warno means, that means warning in the military. Don't put the paint in anything other than metal. Because it will eat through solar cups for one, and you might ruin your shorts or your pants or whatever you have on. I'm gonna find out if this washes out. If it doesn't, these will just be, uh, I don't know. Painter's pants. Painter's pants because I'm not throwing these away. I love these shorts. Back to the video. Hey, we're back and uh, <laughs> we're done with the bricks. Yes, it's another day. Like I said, we both work and just one of those weekends where you're trying to get something done after work. And that's what we got done. So the calipers are completely done. We just have to put on the Brembo stickers that the customer got or my buddy got. So you got the Brembo stickers. These are the OEM stickers for the four pistons. So. We're gonna be taking off the tape and everything and then putting them on, showing you the final thing with that. And then we're gonna speed up as we put back on the rotors and the wheels. Then we'll be done. So here we go. All right guys, so I'm gonna be using Demon Gloss. Focus on the bottle. Demon Gloss, Evo Demon Gloss from Glossip. 
on my buddy's charger. While we're putting the wheels on, I'm gonna be adding a coat of this awesome wax. Give him a, a long lasting shine and for washes on in. So I'm gonna apply this with a orbital just to speed up the process, kind of on a time crunch. So I'm gonna speed this up, show you how I put this on. I've already washed the car by the way. So it's already clean. It's been in my garage for two days now. So here we go. Slow you guys down right quick. I'm going to be finishing this off with the uh, Gloss It Evo Gloss Enhancer Detail Spray. There we go. Gloss, Gloss It Evo Gloss Enhancer Detail Spray. You see that, right? There we go. The wax comes off very easily. Very smooth, you know what I'm saying? Um, I love it, I use it on my car from time to time. One application lasts a very long time. So, I'm just like hitting it with this in between waxes. But this is also something good too to use on the vinyl. I use this on my roof and hood as I will do on his give it that extra protection, especially when it rains, helps the water bead right off. So back to the speed it up version. All right guys, we're done. Kevin had to run off right quick, love his wife. But we're done, we completely put the wheels back on, all the wheels are ready to go. Um, the brakes are ready to go. So we're gonna lower this and take it outside and. Give my buddy a call so he can pick his ride. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We will also be showing the reaction, so don't go anywhere yet. So, here we go. And boom. He's down, ready to go. So, we're going to roll him out, give him a call, and uh, finish waxing this thing, too. So, here we go. All right, guys, we're finished with the car, and my buddy's coming in now. So, what do you think, man? Man, I mean. This is top notch, bro. The way it just contrasts and sets it all with the white and black thing. Man. I noticed how you did some other stuff to the grill, too. Did the grill already with the Daytona vinyl. And you actually did the center catch, too. Correct. Yeah. But you saw that off my channel, so. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Hey, Thank man. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the content, bro. <laughs> no problem, man. This is dope. It's a dope car, bro. Like, I was, when it was in the garage, I like, I don't know. <laughs> that white, that white, the white on the Daytona is different from just like the regular white shack patch. Yeah. The Daytona with that black, with that contrast, I think it just adds a little bit of flavor to it. When it's just all white. I don't think a lot of people have the white ones, they do stuff to it through graphics on and stuff like that. But we did that and did the ceramic coating. Um, it's just gonna make it easier to come off and clean. Okay. A lot of people think it's just like, oh, they'll never get on. No, they'll get dirty, but they'll be super easy to clean. Okay. And then as far as that G2 caliper paint, I've been told this by my buddy B Serious. Um, the paint is like a anti-static or something like that. Okay. To where before, if brake dust got on your calipers over time, you took time to wash it. It took a long time to wash it in between washes. It would kind of stain and like just get really embedded into the calipers themselves. That will keep the brake dust low. And then on top of that, you say you did the, the brake, you did power stop. Yeah, just did the straight power stop. Yeah, so that's gonna help too with the brake dust build up. It'll be minimum you know, like when you wash those, they're gonna always come back like that. The only way they don't is if literally you drive it. From here to California and back, and don't wash it for six months and let it sit out in the Georgia sun and let it just bake into the paint. Okay. Other than that, like, bro, you did an amazing job, bro. Oh. I oh. swear, this is like a split image of my car in a different color. Now, I'm noticing you did stuff to the windows. I ain't gonna say what you did to the windows, but okay. I like that tip, though. I appreciate it. I like appreciate that. It. But it's just like mine. <laughs> I'm noticing, like, yeah. And then also too, I'm gonna tell you some stuff off camera because I'm gonna show y'all in another video 
about the benefits of having four piston calipers over the six piston calipers. If you guys know already, uh, shoot something in the comment section. If you think you know what I'm talking about between the difference of the four piston calipers and the six piston nice. calipers for the Brembos for the Dodge Chargers and Challengers. So that's it for this episode on Octane Rig 92 of us doing his calipers with G2 paint and his rims with four boys ceramic coating. We also washed them with four boys ceramic coating or four boys wash. And then we finished off with a glossy demon wax that's gonna prolong this beautiful white daytona. So until next time guys, later. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, here's some more videos you can check out. Before you do that though, hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. So this way you're notified when we post out awesome new content. Go Jags!